Hello and welcome to Academic, I'm Chris Wood and this is episode 4 of Let's Elm. In this series we're making a web application using the Elm programming language. Uh, this time we're going to try and recreate this attribute section of the character sheets and we're going to be using dictionaries, which we learned about in the, the previous episode, uh, to store this information and manage it. So let's just start. The, the first thing that we need, um, I don't know if you remember, that we have all of our abilities here in a big long list. So what we might do is put in our attributes in another big long list. Okay, so we've got our list of attributes there. Strength, dexterity, stamina, these are the physical attributes. Charisma, manipulation, appearance, um, they are the social attributes, and perception, intelligence, wits, and they're the mental attributes. So we are going to store these. Let's update our model. We want to store information about these, so we need, um, we need a new section in our model. Okay, so we've updated our model. Now we've got this attribute section and it's of type X attributes. Now, of course, there's a clash between the names attributes, which are used for HTML attributes and uh, our attributes dictionary. So we've called it EX attributes, so exalted attributes. Um, we've updated our init. So now it takes this empty, empty X attributes type. And if we have a look at that, so our X attribute type itself is a type alias of a dictionary and it is uh, a dict dict string int type. So the key is a string and the value is an integer. Now it's not a maybe int and that's because these always have to have a value in them. They always have to have a value whether it's just one. Um, now our, in our player information section that wasn't the case. You could um, It starts out with absolutely nothing in that box and we want to make sure that there's something there. But if somebody didn't put a value in this it would have still a value of one. So empty ex attributes here you can see this. Um, from list, we've got this um, strength, dexterity, stamina, cursor manipulation, appearance, perception, intelligence, wits, and they all start with a value of one. So now we need a message to update the attribute essentially that's in the model. Okay, just to try and explain here what I've uh, I've done. Essentially, now we've got um, this new message: edit ex attribute exalted attribute, and it takes an operation type and a string in. Now the operation types in this case are increment and decrement, um, and we've just defined this type. This is a type here. It's a, a union type operation. It has these two options. So now when we get uh, edit ex attribute in, we expect to get an operation type 
and an ex and an exalted attribute. And then we want to update exalted attributes with um, this new, uh, an updated version of it. So we've written this function to help us do that. And it takes in the old attributes, the operation type, and the attribute that's in question here. So in this function, we got the the first thing we do is we take the we get the old attribute as it was. We use dict get um, with the attribute that's getting passed in the attributes dictionary itself. So let's look at the type signature of this. Uh, it takes a comparable, so a key in this case, or something that can be used as a key, um, a, a dictionary of type comparable, so the same type as the key that we're using and with values in it, whatever they may be, and it returns a maybe value. Now, this is because the key might not exist in the dictionary. And so what happens if, when we don't know whether we will have something or we won't have something, we use maybe. And of course, we don't want a maybe value. We want to get, uh, we want to turn it into a real value that we can do something with. And so this, we pass it along to this function. This is the sort of forward piping operator. It takes the output of this function and it pipes it into this function that we've declared here. So maybe with default zero, uh, if we look again at the type signature of this, it's expecting to get in uh, a value, a, which is zero in our case, so the default value, and then a maybe value of the same type, and it returns a, a, a type. So if it, we have something, if there's just a value, then it will return the value, a. If there's nothing, then it will return the default value, which in this case will be zero. And we know that there should be no values that we're not expecting coming in here, um, so we can just give it zero. Now the, the last section of this is that we've got this case statement based on the operation. Either we increment the value or we decrement the value. Or we insert that value back into the dictionary. This makes a new dictionary and it passes it along and we assign it to the model. Great. Um, we don't have any messages hooked up yet, but we can do that pretty quickly. Okay, so we've added that section in there. Um, let me just go over what we've done there. Uh, let's actually, you know what, let's test it out first. You can see here that we've got all of these attributes. Let's open this up. Everything starts with a value of one. We can see the value here. And if we, inc we can increment and decrement this value and it changes within uh, here. In fact, um, yeah. so we can decrement it down. Now there needs to be validation restriction on what these can be. Okay, so um, essentially, I just had to tweak a couple of things there, where um, if we look at our values now, um, these should be between one and five. So hopefully, we can you can see that we can only put these between one and five. We can't increment them more or less there. This is this is just a thing that we needed to do. So um, to do that, let's just double check. Let's just let's go over this whole thing again. So we have this message, this new message here. Edit exalted attribute, operation, and string. Now, I discussed this before. The type of the operation is either increment or decrement. When you get this message coming in, we have the operation and the attribute here, 
and we call this function update ex attributes. It takes an attribute, uh, the attributes dictionary, an operation, and then the, the attribute, the key for the attribute that we're actually interested in. Now it gets the old dictionary out, which um, remember, dict gets, uh, it, it takes in, uh, dict.get takes in a comparable, so this is something that can be a key, um, and then a dictionary, and then it gives you a value, maybe a value. So the, the key may or may not be in there, so you maybe have a value. In this case, uh, we have, we will always have something, but if we had nothing for some reason, basically we use, we want to take the maybe and convert it to the actual value so we can do stuff with it. So we've used maybe with default zero here. So if the, the attribute for some reason was nothing, then uh, it would instead be converted to zero. And then we've got a case statement where if the operation is increment, then we do this. Um, but we need to, we've got a, a sort of guard here. That if the, the old attribute is less than five, then we can increment it, no problem. And we just insert the new, uh, again, uh, uh, we just insert this um, into this uh, key, the attribute name. We add one to the old attribute, and then this is the attribute dictionary in it. And remember, this is the, the type signature of, of dict.insert. It takes a comparable, a key, a value, and then a dictionary with the same types as the keys and values. And then it returns a new dictionary with the keys and values the same. Um, now, if it's, gr if it's not less than five, then we'll just return the attributes unchanged. We don't want to modify it because it's, it's only between one and five. Uh, and the same with decrement. We check if it's greater than one, and if it is, then we can decrement it. And if it's not, then we just return it unchanged. And this just gets assigned straight back to our attributes. So you can see this ex attribute section, we update it using these things. Great. Now, uh, to make the view for this, so we can actually look at them and modify them. You can see here that we've got a player information view. Um, this is our old one that we, we moved out into a separate view, but we've now got this new view here, all ex attributes view, and it takes a model in. Now, I've made this section. These are how you. This is how you make comments in Elm. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either do a double dash or a multi-line comment, which I'll show you at a later date. Um, but we have a list of attributes which we made earlier. We haven't actually used these uh, yet, but um, uh, they will be used later probably. We might have to delete them in the end. Who knows? So all ex attributes. It takes a model and returns a HTML message. Our model comes in here. It's provided by our, our update after our update function. Uh, you call the uh, view function, it calls the view function automatically, and then you get this model. And then that is a div, and then for its values, for the nodes in the div, um, what we're doing is we're doing this uh, list map again. We're going dict.toList, and let's show you the type signature. You have a dict with its keys and values, and it makes a list of tuples of the key and the values. So this is how it comes in. And remember, we did the opposite operation back here, uh, from list, dict up from list, and it's a list of tuples with a key and the value. So we've done the opposite of that here. And then what we want to do with those attributes once they're into this list is we want to turn them into uh, an actual piece, an actual HTML message. So we made this little function here. It takes an ex attribute. It takes a tuple with a string and the the so this is the name of the the attribute, the current value of the attribute, and returns a HTML message. So this is tuple unpacking here. Um, this is sort of, sort of pattern matching, matching. It says the, the thing that's coming into this function will be a tuple and it'll have two values. And I want to call those values, I want to take them out and I want to call them ex attribute and ex attribute value. And then it returns a div. And the div is, um, it's, it's nodes inside here are text with um, the, the name of the attribute here. Um, and you know what, I might, I might tweak this very slightly whilst we're here to add, just for now, uh, an empty string. Plus plus here. Um, so we'll do that. So essentially it's the name of the attribute. And then we have a uh, two string. We convert this integer, which is the current value of our attribute uh, to a string so that we can put it in uh, as text. And then we take, we have a button and it has the on click message edit ex attribute. We've given it the operation decrement. This button will always have that operation and it's ex attribute. This, so this is the name of the attribute that we're actually modifying. So this is the current value of it that we're wanting to display, but then we want to have a button that can modify that value. So send this message to our update function. 
it just has a minus on it. And then we've got the same with another button, which is the same, except this has the increment message instead of the decrement message. So we map this function across all of our list. And remember, it looks like this, except it's got modified values, but it looks like this. Um, we have a list of these things, and we map that function across it. Uh, this That function is expecting to have a tuple with a key and a value, and we're applying it to everything that's in this list over uh, individually. This returns a list um, of, uh, of HTML messages. Oh, sorry, that's the, the wrong one. So this returns a list of HTML messages, which goes into here and completes what div's expecting two lists it gets out. And that's that. So um, yeah, these, these all work now. Let's recompile this now that we've added a space just for a bit of clarity. So there we've got our appearance and everything is going, we can modify everything. And if we look at our model now, we've got our ex attributes with our current values and we can modify all these. So actually, you know, we're, we're going along quite well. We've got a good section of the, the functionality. Now, uh, this looks ugly just now, but don't let that fool you. Um, getting the structure of the application itself is the most difficult bit most of the time. So we will beautify this later on with nice CSS, but this core structure, you know, this is getting to a point where it's sort of relatively functional. Right, so um, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be creating, probably creating the attribute section and uh, maybe some other little bits and pieces. Uh, hopefully that was a good introduction to Dict and uh, the types of things that we can do with um, Dix and Elm and using them to record values. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing to Academic to get all of the latest videos and uh, like. And if you've got any questions, then either comment down below or um, send me a message on Twitter. I'm at Chris Wellswood. I'd be happy to answer anything. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.